Hey y'all, okay, I'm back. I can talk with no coughing attacks, hopefully. So, Acts 10. I wanted to come back and read Acts 10 to you because I also wanted to touch on what I had held up in the previous video about how God does not show favoritism and talking about how racial um, division isn't necessary. And then I wanted to share with you some things from Dr. Tony Evans' commentary. So I wanted to kind of hone in on that because I believe it is just so prevalent in our world today. So let me go ahead and just read through chapter 10, and I want to touch on those two subjects. Here we go. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer, and his name was Cornelius. Now again, as many times as I've read other people's names, I want you to notice the character qualities that people say about him and how do people say things about you and how do you want to be remembered. Cornelius was the captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man and was ever, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. All great qualities to be known by. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. And the angel replied, your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa, which is 32 miles south of where he was and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tanner, who lives near a seashore. So you got Simon Peter, you got Simon the tanner, you got two different Simons here, all right? So keep that in mind as well, because there's many Simons in the Bible. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. The next day, or as Cornelius's messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up to the flat of roof to pray. It was about noon. Well, first of all, I'm thinking, okay, hot. If it's anything like Florida, noontime, hot, flat roof, I don't know, it's, it's going to be kind of stifling up there. And he was hungry, huh, hot and hungry. Here we go. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Now, this is what he saw. And, and I know when I've read this before, we've totally taken it out of context. And we said, okay, this is why we hunters do and fishermen do what we do. It says, he saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by those four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. Then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, go kill and eat them. No, oh, Lord, Peter declared, I've never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. That's another thing to remember, Jewish laws. Jesus came and these laws mean something different now because we've got the covering of Jesus Christ so much more than these laws that they've always through generations been living by. Nothing wrong with some of these laws, but you've got to know you've got Jesus and his mercy and love and forgiveness. <clears throat> All right. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean the, that God has made clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheep was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could be the, this vision mean? Just then, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked a man if Simon Peter was staying here. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, I have sent them. So the Holy Spirit was telling him this. We got to listen to the, our God conscience. So Peter went down and said, I'm the man you're looking for. Why have you come? They said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well-respected by all Jews. An angel, a holy angel instructed him to summon you to the house so that you can hear, he can hear your message. It was another divine appointment. We've talked about divine appointments before. So Peter invited the men and stayed for the night. 
The next day, he went with them, accompanied by some of his brothers from Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Remember, 32 miles, that was their walk. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and his close friends. So he's curious, I mean, he, he wanted to know. He wanted to know more about this message and the good news. As Peter entered the home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, mm -mm, stand up. I am human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. So he's like, don't, don't worship me. Nope. I'm not the one you need to be following. You need to be following Jesus Christ. And that can be said so much of today. Imagine if Jesus um, were to friend you on social media. You'd be like, yes, 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 yes. You know, follow him. Don't worry about all the other people you're following. You need to make sure you're following Jesus. I don't know, two different separate things, but always make sure you're following Jesus. Peter told them, you know it's against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. So you've got two different nationalities, two different races, two different what have yous, political views, anything. They're not supposed to be, according to law, socializing with one another. But here we go. Haha, <laughs> but God. But God has shown me that I no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now, tell me why you sent me. Cornelius replied, four days ago, I was praying in my house about the same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying at the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives near the seashore. So, I sent for you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now, we're all here, waiting for before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. Verse 34, almost done. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that the Lord shows, God shows no favoritism. In every nation, listen to this, he accepts those who fear him, that means respect him, and do what is right. Do what is right in God's sight. There you go. This is the message of the good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace through God, with God, through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. Does it matter? Jew, Gentile, it doesn't matter what you side you're on in anything. Jesus is here for all. He is here for you. You have an open invitation. You know what happened throughout J Jude Judea, no, Judea, Judea, <laughs> beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And the apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea, Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the cross. But God, another but God moment, raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to those whom God had chosen in advance to be his witness. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the appointed one by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Remember, the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. He will forgive all of your sins. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who were listening. Remember, he had family and friends in his home, Cornelius did. They were listening to the message. The Jewish believers 
who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out unto the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues, other languages, and praising God. Last um, couple of verses here. Then Peter asked, um, can you object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave the orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with him for several days. So some quick notes that I didn't show in the other video was remember, how do you want to be remembered? Like we heard about Cornelius. Um, in verse 28 and in verse 15, um, let me go back to verse 15. It says, but the voice spoke, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. And in verse 28, it says, you know, it is against our laws for the Jewish man to enter the Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. I said, God was showing Peter <clears throat> the, to put down all racial and national division. Jews and Gentiles can get along. We all can get along. It helps when we have one common likeness, like God. Here's what Dr. Tony Evans said. I wanted to print out, point out. He said in his um, commentary Bible here, the Lord was getting ready to teach Peter more about more than mere changes to his diet. Not just, you know, he said, oh, I'm not supposed to eat all that stuff. No, it's not just about the food. It's not going out and hunting and getting it and all that stuff. No, it's more, so much more. That's how God is. He always gives you these little things, but there's always so much more behind the meaning that you think you get. He was about to break down racial divides and signal the dawning of a new day. At a clear word from God, Peter had changed his conviction on a matter and obeyed at once. Given the Bible's clear teaching on racial equality, since all people come from one source, it doesn't require years of training and seminars to embrace the truth. It simply requires a quick willingness to take God at his word. We must see people as God sees them. So I think about all of this division and all of this talk about division, um, racial division in our country. Y'all, I am not a racist. I love people of all color because that's what God tells us to do. Like even Dr. Tony Evans said, we've got to have that willingness to do what God wants us to do. But whenever I've got, you see media and, and news and articles, whenever they are bombarding you with um, putting something in your face so much, to me, that drives me a little crazy and it can cause some bitterness and then I have to get in check right away. I have to remember that it's not, for me, it's not about at all about the color of your skin. I look at the heart. I mean, there's people out there that whatever color, I, I kind of look, I know we are not to judge, but I know this is also just a human thing. You look at somebody and you're like, mm, okay, that's, that's what they are doing. You know, it's not a good thing. It's not a godly thing. It's not a kind thing. And it doesn't matter what color they are. There's stupidity and ignorance in the world. And we need to be in a world with much love and wisdom. Love and wisdom for our, for our neighbors. Our neighbors is everyone. God wants us to love him and love others. That is the most important command to him. If we can do that, all of this racial divisionness that keeps going on and on and on, it could be coming to a shh. If we just all will love, love like Jesus loves, okay? Um, there's so many different avenues that we could touch on here, but I don't want to go in and, and without any notes and just say something and it sounds like stupidity on my part, but educate yourself. Um, know what you 
truly believe. And I hope that you truly believe, as the Bible tells us to, that God does not see color. When he talks about unequalness and un, um, unequal yokeness and all, he's talking about Christians and non-Christians. But Christians are always to love. You are to show love. You are to be love. Love is a verb. All right? So, I hope and pray that you're not one that's going to go out there and cause more divisiveness. But you're going to bring love to everyone around. Because that's how we should be treated. All right? So, I'll get on chapter 11 later. I hope you have a wonderful day. Chapter 10 is now done. And I'm enjoying this because this keeps me accountable. Even if one person watches this, this really keeps me accountable um, in going through the Bible. So I hope you have a fabulous day. And always remember to soak up the sun, the sun, wherever you are. Take care. See you later.